Welcome once again to the second half of our doubleheader tonight between IPFW and Kentucky State. I'm Mike Neely along with former IPFW player Charles Washington tonight bringing you this game between uh, IPFW and Kentucky State. IPFW coming into this game at 12 and 3, 2 and 3 in the Great Lakes Valley Conference and Kentucky State 5 and 6 and 1 and 4 in the conference. Let's go down to the floor and get the starting lineups for tonight's games and then we'll talk just a little bit about them. Again, the starting lineups for Kentucky State University. Number four, Mike Shoulders. Number 11, Dennis Hanna. Number 14, Nicholas Scott. Number 20, Toby Joseph. Number 30, Antonio Chambers. Kentucky State, a brand new team in the GLVC. Let's go down to the floor once again for our national anthem. Starting lineup for IPFW, number four, Lawrence Jordan, number 25, Glenn Howard, number 33, Sam Long Jr., number 41, Sean Gibson, and number 54, Scott Burkhart. And Charles Washington, uh, Kentucky State, a brand new team in the uh, Great Lakes Valley Conference. Uh, they have just uh, entered one of the toughest conferences in the country. And uh, what do you look for in the matchup tonight between IPFW and Kentucky State? Well, right now, Kentucky State, they're struggling a little bit. They're just five and six and one and four in the conference. But what IPFW can't do is take them lightly. They have to come out and play hard basketball for 40 minutes and not take Kentucky State light just because of their record. And they do have uh, a very good player who's just became eligible, um, Chambers. 
and he's, he averages about 12, 12 to 13 rebounds and 19, 20 points a game. Well, IPFW having a tough start in the GLVC, and GLVC that is in his own right at uh, two and three after going uh, 10 and 0 to start off the preseason. Oh, that's true, but they did have two heartbreaking losses. Jordan quickly uh, drives up the lane, but is stolen by Kentucky State and come down the floor. Nicholas Scott with the ball over to Dennis Hanna. Scott takes the shot. It's long, rebound Jordan. Glenn Howard can't find anywhere to go with it. Passes in to Honstrader. Howard with the shot. An offensive foul is called. The basket will be called good. Two to nothing IPFW. Just underway here in the multi-purpose building. That was a good drive by Howard. I, talking with Andy Piazza, he said he expects Howard to take more of the scoring load upon himself. He's been playing in accordance to Piazza too much into the team structure, and Piazza wants him to stand out just a little bit because of the great athlete that he is. Dennis Hanna with the ball. Shot is long. Howard with a nice attempt on the rebound, but stolen by Jordan. And Jordan going to take it all the way. And he misses. Rebound Burkhart. Burkhart gets the second rebound and puts it in, and a foul is called. So Scott Burkhart, the six foot five junior from Allentown, Pennsylvania, gets on the scoreboard with his first two. That was a great athletic move to save the ball by Howard, but as a rule of thumb, you never want to save the ball under the opponent's basket. Case in point, the Kentucky Wesleyan game, when IPFW was trying diligently and played excellent defense and the ball went free and uh, was thrown in the basket and remember uh, when Corey Crowder got the uh, the easy layup in Kentucky Wesleyan that proved to be the, the key point in their win. Exactly. It turned out great for IPFW this time but in a close game like the one you just mentioned it could could be murder. Dennis Hanna will inbound the ball for Kentucky State. Kentucky State at five and six and one and four in the conference so far. Five nothing, IPFW on top. 18.35 left in the first half. We've got a lot of time left. Passes inside. And the bucket is good by Mike Shoulders. His first two, 5-2 IPFW. Kentucky State on the full court press. And up ahead to Jordan. Jordan's got a break to Burkhardt. Burkhardt gets fouled again, almost goes in, but he'll go to the line again for another two shots. Can't say enough about Mike. Uh, not, well, he's playing like Michael Jordan, isn't he? Lawrence Jordan, the playmaking guard of IPFW, who, when he's going well, IPFW is awfully hard to stop. Well, right now, Lawrence is leading the nation in Division II basketball in assists at right around nine a game. And again, that leads the nation. And he also leads the team in steals and is right up in the nation categories in steals at four a game. And to add to that, he leads IPFW in scoring. Uh, well, he leads the world then, doesn't he? <laughs> in fact, he's not doing a bad job on the rebounding end as well. Only five foot eight. Well, this is his last year, and he's really turned it on. He's in, in all facets of the game. He's really doing a great job. The turnover by Kentucky State gives IPFW the ball. They've got a 7-2 lead. Scott Burkhardt's got five quick points early. And a nice pass from Glenn Howard to Sam Long, Jr. 9-2 IPFW. Just missed. 
Rebound Kentucky State. And Mike Shoulders will be called for the offensive foul as he ducked his shoulder in. Are you okay? Yeah, the referee called travel. And there you see the score. IPFW off to a quick start. Exactly what we anticipated early. We'll see if they can sustain this pace throughout the game. Kentucky State is struggling, but they do look like they have five good athletes on the floor. When you have that, you have to be aware at all times. Howard thought about the three-point attempt. Instead passes to Burkhardt. Burkhardt's on fire early. Seven points for Scott Burkhardt out of the 11 IPFW has. Jordan messes up the shot for number 11, Dennis Hanna, but he's called for the foul, and the bucket is going to be called good. That was a great drive to the basket by Burkhardt last time down the floor. Great switch of hands. 16.53 left in the first half. IPFW on top, 11 to 4. Dennis Hanna will be at the line for Kentucky State to knock it down to a six-point lead. Dennis Hanna from Riviera Beach, Florida. And I'm sure he wishes he was there right now. Burkhardt, great pass to Sean Gibson. Kentucky State breaks the pressure. And the pass is broken up by Glenn Howard. IPFW playing some good full court pressure right now. Yes, and on the other end on the offensive end, that was a great post to post pass. Three point shot. It's long. And the rebound, Sean Gibson. They head to Jordan. Burkhardt, pass another pass to Gibson, and Gibson puts it in. Two quick assists for Scott Burkhardt. Gibson, the beneficiary of them. Again, that was a great pass and great move by Gibson after he got the great pass. And the shot is good by Dennis Hanna. 15-6 IPFW on top. 15-31 left in the first half. Jordan down quickly. It's stolen. Kentucky State comes away with it. Three-point shot. Good. Cornell Forrest, who just entered the ball game. And a steal by Scott. It's in. Dennis Hanna again with six points now early, 15 to 11. Kentucky State coming back. IPFW a little lackadaisical. Well, again, you have five good athletes, and you don't want to get them turned on because once they turn it on, it's hard to turn them off. Gibson with a rebound. Great defense by Kentucky State underneath. Gibson couldn't see the pass from Jordan. Jordan uh, a little bit disgusted. What IPFW can't do right now, Mike, is let Kentucky State get momentum and then they'll gain confidence and then they might even think that they can beat IPFW. For Kentucky State, number 34, Severin Fuller, coming in for Antonio Chambers. Dennis Hanna. Averages 13.8 points for Kentucky State. And a nice pass underneath to number 34, Cedric Fuller, who also just entered the ballgame. He's got his first two at 14.25 in the first half. Left, 15-13, Kentucky State closing the gap. 
Leonard Fox now in for IPFW along with Scott Shank. And the ball goes over to Kentucky State. So IPFW having some uh, very difficult times right now. Right now, if Kentucky State scores this time down, I think it would be a good idea for Andy Piazza to call a timeout. Bonner comes away with the ball. Pass inside. And he throws it off Gibson. Cedric Fuller. Wholesale changes right now for IPFW, trying to find the right combination to slow these thoroughbreds down. Lloyd Surgeon has entered the ballgame for IPFW. One of three people on IPFW that averages in double figures. He is at 11.4. Jordan, the leading scorer, at 11.8. And Surgeon gets the steal. He's going to take it all the way, and he jams it home. Wakes everybody up here. Quickly, and Gibson with a rebound. Well, that worked a lot better than the timeout to change the momentum. Jordan ahead to Scott Shank, and Shank didn't see the pass. sees his first action tonight, number 10. 170 pound junior from Bloomfield, Indiana. Mike's been out for a while. He, he was the only thing at mononucleosis. He's been out for a while and he's, now he's back at full strength. Shot is long, rebound Gibson for IPFW. Jordan up ahead quickly and Jordan's gonna take it all the way. What a tremendous drive by Lawrence Jordan. His first two points. IPFW with a 19-13 lead with 12.55 left in the first half and a turnover by Kentucky State. Lawrence Jordan going coast to coast on that. Might also add in IPFW's triple time, triple overtime loss to Bellarmine last week, Lawrence Jordan played 55 minutes. Truly in uh, decent shape to play 55 minutes. 55 minutes. That's, that's quite amazing. That is unbelievable. Ball is turned over to Kentucky State on the rebound. IPFW up by six points. 12.43 left in the first half. And a nice speed inside. Antonio Chambers, the beneficiary of the pass from Cornell Forest. Ball is deflected by Kentucky State. IPFW will reset it. Leonard Fox on the outside. Sean Gibson thinks about it. A good pass inside to Surgeon. It's blocked. Kentucky State with a rebound. 19-15. 12-03 left. IPFW on top by four points. And Hannah takes the acrobatic shot and gets it to fall. He's got eight points now. 19-17 IPFW on top. Hannah's a good athlete. As I'm sure everyone saw in that great athletic shot. Fox could have been called for the charge, and it looks like he's going to be called for the charge. A little bit of a late whistle, but it was a good call. It's hard to tell on that play as it is and truly is one of the hardest plays to call in basketball. Well, you never win the favor of the opposing coach when you take that long to blow the whistle, that's for sure. And a nice bank shot by Antonio Chambers. He's got four, 19 all. We're tied up with 11.22 to go in the first half. Jordan with a great feed to Gibson. Gibson makes the same move he did before. And the results are success. Six points for Gibson. Kentucky State comes back, and he's hammered by Leonard Fox. 
And Antonio Chambers will go to the line to try to tie this ball game up. I think Lawrence could have shot that ball the last time down the court, but uh, he's leading the, leading the nation in assists, so why not? Well, Lawrence Jordan, every team's dream, because you know if you get open and your hands are there, the, bo the ball's going to be there also. Just be looking for it. If you don't look for it, he'll hit you in the head with it. Number 41, Lynn McCarrion, also number 32, William Moon, into the thoroughbred lineup. Kentucky State so far playing a, a very, uh, very good ball game. Chambers gets his fifth point. Chambers, six foot eight, from Frankfort, Kentucky. Only a sophomore. So you'll hear from him in the future. And Kentucky of, State comes away with a rebound. A lot of teams are hearing from him now, Mike. He's averaging 19 points and well over 12 rebounds a game. Good point. <laughs> Incidentally, that 12.3 leads the league. Personal ball by FW. Sergeant, as you saw on the screen there, number 40, was charged with a foul. And IPFW has got six team fouls now. Early, with 10.57 left in the first half, that could be uh, very important for Kentucky State. That is, if they can shoot the free throws well. Right now, the crowd's kind of subdued, I guess, waiting for some excitement. Maybe it's just a school night. Could be, could be. And the shot is just in and out. IPFW the rebound. Glenn Howard in the corner. Passes into Burkhardt. Back to Jordan. Jordan with a penetration to Burkhardt, who wasn't really expecting the pass, but he said, look what I found, and put it in. Nine points for Burkhardt. Ten minutes, 25 seconds left in the first half, and Jordan gets the steal. He's got a two-on-one, and quickly the pass is and a great look back to Burkhardt. 11 points for Scott Burkhardt, a tremendous look back by Lawrence Jordan. What I'd like to know, Charles, is how in the world did he know that Burkhardt was there? Well, when you're playing with Lawrence, you just always look for the ball, no matter where you are. He always seems to know where the person is, and he usually makes the right decision. And that, again, is why he's leading the nation in assists. Number 50, John Lundstrider, his first... And that is also why Burkhardt's got 11 points now in double figures, with still 10 minutes left to go in the first half. Messiah Troutman. And you can count on this man to be in double figures before the night's over. Number 30, Antonio Chambers for Kentucky State. He misses the first one. Five-point lead for IPFW, 25-20, with 10 minutes left to go in the first half. Looking at Chambers, he kind of reminds you of Winston Bennett, the great player from Kentucky and now with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Sam Long, back to Jordan. Jordan with a penetration again. Burkhardt again is fouled. Glenn McCary is going to be charged with the foul. He's a freshman, six foot six from Detroit, Michigan. Personal foul on Kentucky State University. Number 41, Glenn McCary, his first team third. 9.46 left on the shot, or the clock, that is. It'd be a long shot clock, wouldn't it? <laughs> 25-21, IPFW up by four. Howard from three-point range. It's a little bit long, and a rebound. Sam Long, Jr., the turnaround jumper is good. Four points for Sam Long. That was just a great rebound. And the shot is, uh, was that a shot or a pass? I'd like to know. IPFW comes up with it anyway. Jordan's up ahead. He's going to push it again. Loses control of the ball. Could have been called for a palm, but is not. And passes off to Sam Long Jr. who gets the three-pointer. 
I guarantee you that won't be one of Lawrence's smoother assists of the year. Nonetheless, it is an assist. Foul is going to be called on John Heinstrader. And uh, Glenn McCurry will go to the line to shoot his first attempts at the free throw line. IPFW on top, 30 to 21 over Kentucky State. 8:58 left in the first half. Well, from my observations so far, Charles, it looks like Kentucky State can run with uh, IPFW, uh, maybe not uh, as strong in the half court game. Well, right now. Like I said before, you know, they're great athletes. They just need to stop turning the ball over. If they stop turning the ball over, they can make a ball game out of this. They seem to be a very undisciplined team. Mm -hmm. Of course, they're also, uh, in all fairness, a very young team as well. Uh, only a few seniors, and uh, Daryl Royster, uh, Tony Hilton uh, were both scratched out of Kentucky State's lineup, and they're one of only uh, four seniors on the entire team. Well, I guess that does make a little more fair. Mike Shoulders, the other senior who started for Kentucky State. Glenn McCary missed both free, free throws, that is, and it's still 30 to 21. And, again, and a steal by Kentucky State up ahead to Hannah. Hannah's going to have an easy lay-in. We can't write him off too early. They're only down seven. With plenty of time to go. And a nice rebound. For Glenn Howard, he's got his four points now, 32 to 23, IPFW up by nine now. And a kickball is going to be called against IPFW. They'll reset the shot clock. Into the IPFW line at number 10, Mike Pittman. Coming out with Sam Ball. Mike Pittman back into the ball game now for IPFW, number 10. And the shot is good. Mike Shoulders, six foot three senior from Louisville. Pittman passes inside. Pittman fakes the shot. In trouble in the corner. Passes out to Leonard Fox from three point land. His foot was on the line. Pittman gets the rebound. Fox again from three point range. Long. John Heinstrutter, the rebound. IPFW with uh, numerous chances here. Sean Gibson finally fouled. Glenn McCary will be charged with it. That time Mike Pittman went down under there with the timber and got, came out with the rebound. Pittman only 5'11". As you see the score, 32-25. Seven minutes, 18 seconds left in the first half in what has been uh, an interesting ball game so far. Uh, Kentucky State uh, staying with us. Pittman, and just in and out. Would have been a three. And a wild shot by Toby Joseph up ahead to Surgeon who gets a little fancy with it and it's taken away by Kentucky State. And a wide open Antonio Chambers. Eight points for him. 642 left, 32-27. IPFW on top. We're in the first half. Fox with a two-on-one. And Surgeon tries to jam it, but is instead going to go to the line to shoot two as Antonio Chambers commits the foul. As you can see the replay there, which uh, Chambers clearly uh, hacked him. 
good look at Lloyd Surgent, senior from Saginaw, Michigan. And he gets the first one. Surgent shooting a very good percentage at the free throw line. Uh, it's good to see him knock that one down. Uh, in the last few games, Lloyd's uh, percentage had went way down. He was shooting at a 90% clip, and now he's right at about 70. So it's good to see Lloyd back on track. Surgent with four points, and IPFW with a seven-point lead. 34 to 27, 632 left in the first half. Good hustle, good hustle there by Mike Pittman. Almost comes up with the steal. And the shot is just short and a rebound by Antonio Chambers. Chambers, like I said, uh, he'll be in double figures before the night's over. He's in double figures before the half's over. He's got 10. He's way above the rim on that rebound. One of the reasons why I'm sure he leads the league in rebounding. Chambers comes away with a steal. Anna up ahead. And the shot by number 20 is just uh, almost went in and out, but it went in anyway. Toby Joseph with his first two. And now Kentucky State closing the gap again. 34-31 IPFW on top. 5.50 left in the first half. Fouls on uh, Mike's shoulders. And there you see him right there, number four for Kentucky State. On that last shot by Joseph, he actually shot that shot from behind the backboard. This is great effort by Joseph. Not your ideal transitional bre uh, fast break uh, shot. <laughs> Lawrence Jordan gets his third point. Makes it 35-31. Good look at the senior playmaking guard, the all-time assist leader for IPFW. Remarkable career. Kentucky State pushes it up quickly and can't quite get it to fall. Rebound Sean Gibson. He'll push it up to Jordan. Jordan's going to go quickly up the floor, and the penetration proves off to be very costly for Kentucky State because John Hanstreiter gets his first two and uh, Lawrence Jordan. The key to just about every ball game, IPFW plays. Chambers with the rebound, strong rebound. He's going to be called for the offensive foul, and that's a, a good call, actually. This was a good call, but it's usually called on the defense. It's so a good break right there for IPFW. That was more of an NBA call right there. Uh, they do call that call quite a bit in the NBA, but you seldom see it in college. Right. Of course, you seldom see the travel call in the NBA, so I guess it all <laughs> kind of averages out, right? I thought everyone got three steps on the layup. Yeah. Well, I saw a replay the other night with the, uh, somebody on the Spurs got five steps. I mean, it... It's unbelievable that they can't see some of these uh, traveling in the NBA. Still love the NBA, though. Sure. I'm an NBA fanatic. <laughs> Glenn Howard gets tripped up and uh, gets nothing out of it except a turnover. 38-31. IPFW up by seven points, 450 left in the first half. That's a two-point shot by Toby Joseph. He's got four points now, 38-33 IPFW on top. Jordan pushing it up quickly. Every time he touches the ball, he's up there in a hurry. And the rebound goes to Kentucky State just off the hands of John Honstrader. Kentucky State getting back uh, fairly well in the fast break. Right now, they're, they're really not playing bad basketball. They're right in the game. And they're missing easy shots just like that. Or they could really uh, be a very close game, and they could uh, actually be ahead in this ball game. But uh, instead, Honstrider gets fouled, and IPFW's got a chance to add on to a five-point lead. Mike Schultz, his third personal foul. 
shoulders with a little bit of a frustration foul, I'd imagine, because uh, he did have a fairly easy shot down there in the last uh, break for Kentucky State. Constrider, a 65% shooter. Trying to improve upon that right now. Constrider's only a freshman, six foot eight. He's from Seymour, Indiana. Coach Andy Piazza has a bright future to look to. And Sam Long Jr. is just a sophomore. Constrider. Gibson, a sophomore. Excuse, Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Go ahead. We're in perfect sync. IPFW comes away with a rebound. We're both afraid to talk now. Hans Strider off the nice pass from Gibson. All right, from Gordon. Jordan gets the ball so fast, gets rid of it so fast, I can't even see when he passes it. The guy's incredible. Constrider's got five points in deep, and it's tough to stop when you get it in that deep. Number 41, Glenn McCary gets his first two. And IPFW up by six. Jordan pickpockets Kentucky State after an apparent steal. And Honstrider is uh, fouled by Glenn McCary, and McCary uh, disagrees vehemently with that call. is playing very well. Hit a nice layup on the last, on, the last, on his last bucket, much to the dismay of the crowd and his teammates. He laid it in instead of dunking the ball. And he'll go to the line right now. 3.06 left in the first half. 41-35, fairly close ball, fairly close. Close ball game so far in the first half. It's now 42-35 as Honstrader makes the first of a one-on-one -on -one situation. Man, he's got seven points. So far, a very quick half as no timeouts have been called. Both uh, coaches seem to be fairly well pleased with their team's play. And it's really been a pretty clean ball game so far. As it has been. And a steal, almost a steal, by Scott Burkhardt. Instead, it'll go back to Kentucky State. There's head coach William Graham, as you saw on your screen. Looks like Graham could probably suit up and play himself right now, huh? He did play professional ball. Is that right? Yes, he did. Why? You know, that's why you're here, Charles. <laughs> Give us those tidbits of information. I just Turnover. did my homework. Jordan is going to have a very easy layup. He's got it. Six points for Lauren Jordan. 45-35. Ten-point lead now for IPFW. And a foul is going to be called on Gibson. Who do you play for? Kentucky State. College. He, he played went, college for yes. William Graham did. Okay. Yes. Then he got drafted into the NBA, but he did not make the team. He made made it to the last cut, and then he played overseas. Good look at uh, Cedric Fuller, who's at the line for Kentucky State. He's got three points now as he makes the first free throw. Now has a second one. 45-36. Now 45-37. Up ahead to Burkhardt. Burkhardt takes the shot and got to, seemed like he uh, was calling for the foul, but uh, there was no such call. And uh, rebounding uh, foul is going to be called on IPFW. Kentucky State, while the clock has uh, not moved, will go to the line once more. If they can get these free throws to start uh, falling, and they'll be back into this ball game in a hurry. Going to the line, the third round, swing three by Chris Moore. 
Why don't you uh, read a little bit of that information about uh, head coach William Graham for Kentucky State. That seems uh, pretty interesting. Well, in his senior year, and a slam by Burkhart. And again, who else but Lawrence Jordan with the assist? I think he's close to his average already. 47-37. IPFW on top by 10 points. And Hannah comes away with 12 points. And a turnover by IPFW quickly. Can't look down. The ball's going back and forth now. 154 left in the first half. 47-39, a lightning quick first half so far. Pass goes out. It could be an over and back, but Jordan hustles away and comes up and it gets fouled on the breakaway. Could be called a breakaway foul. I don't know if they have that in college or not. Yes, they do. They should. But they didn't call it. That was about as close to one as there could be. Jordan with some excellent hustle down court. 152 left, IPFW on top by eight points, 47 to 39. You cannot be lackadaisical whenever you're playing against Lawrence Jordan. Case in point with, with what just happened. Mm -hmm. Jordan from Muncie, Muncie South High School in Muncie, Indiana. Gets his Free throws to fall, and he's got eight points, 49-39. IPFW again by 10. Jordan with a steal. He's going to take it all the way. Tries to force a pass in, finally gets it in. Shank misses it. Rebound, Surgent. Surgent muscles his way up there and gets it to fall. Six points for Surgent. And now a 12-point lead for IPFW. One minute and 30 seconds left in the first half. Hannah's got the ball right now for Kentucky State. Three-point shot, just off. And the rebound, Burkhart. Jordan up ahead, he's got a three on two. Gibson is fouled. Foul's gonna be on Toby Joseph. Sean Gibson, only a freshman. He's from New Albany, Indiana. Six foot eight, 200 pounds. From Floyd Central High School. I think he started all games for IPFW. Very consistent player. Incidentally, played with Pat Graham of Indiana in high school. Averaged about 14 points. It was a very steady player in high school. Doing a great job for IPFW this year. Leading rebounder, actually. 4.9 rebounds a game. Of course, that's spread out very evenly among the team. And he makes both free throws. He's got eight points, 53-39, IPFW on top. Kentucky State down quickly. And a great rebound by Cedric Fuller. And it's now 53-41, IPFW. Scott Shank with the ball. Cross-court pass to Surgent. Gibson inside to Burkhardt. Burkhardt got it to fall. Burkhardt with 15 points here in the first half. 30 seconds left. 55-41. IPFW. Burkhardt's having a great half. 20 seconds left now. And Kentucky State's going to try to hold on the ball. They don't want any more damage done than what's already been done in the last minute by IPFW as they build up a 14-point lead. Seven seconds now. Five, four, three, two, and Hannah comes away with a bucket as the half ends. Dennis Hannah with 14 points in the first half for Kentucky State. Keeps him in the ball game with that last second shot. 55 to 43 is our halftime score. And Scott Burkhardt with a tremendous first half, uh, mainly because of the playmaking of who else but our friend Lawrence Jordan, as usual.
Well, Lawrence, he's, as I said, he's leading the nation in assists. He's very, very close to leading the nation in steals. He's just, you know, a tremendous ball player. He's padding both of those categories tonight. And right now, Kentucky State seems to be a little lackadaisical. I, I, right now, I don't think that they think they can win. Okay, we'll go down uh, to the studio now for the uh, halftime presentation. As you see the score there, halftime 55-43, IPFW over Kentucky State. We'll be back for the second half shortly. Stay tuned. And here at halftime of the Kentucky State IPFW game, talking with Lawrence Jordan. Of course, it is tape delay. Lawrence, you've been here five years. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the first years and now this being your senior year? Well, um, my first couple of years here, you know, we, we didn't have very much success. Uh, we had subpar season. We had an 8 and 20 season and a 9 and 19. You know, um, we played good top notch competition, but we just couldn't get it put it together. And uh, but now, you know, we've been 15 and 13 the last couple of years, and 20. We won 21 games last year, and this year we're certainly on a roll. And um, the attitude towards you know winning and uh, the whole program has changed in the last couple of years. And uh, I guess that's a little credit to the coaching staff of Coach Piazza and Felsky. You know, they've changed things around here and got us thinking. You know, with a positive of attitude and uh, we're coming along right now. Looking at the stat sheets, I see Lawrence that you're leading the team in assists and steals and you're up in the top four or five in the nation in both of those categories. But there's one category that I'm sure you're not very accustomed with leading the team and that's scoring. Right now you're leading the team in scoring with a 12.5 average. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that and the extra scoring burden that you have on yourself this year? Well, Charlie, um, I've always been capable of scoring. Is, um, I just hadn't been asked to score and uh, you know, last year we had a couple of great wings in uh, Bruce Roller and Steve Bart and we lost those guys to graduation. So this year you know, I had to take it upon myself to take a few more shots and uh, be the all-around leader, the vocal leader. Like you said, I am leading the team in assists, so that's my main category. You know, and uh, scoring, you know, is pick up. And uh, it's been it's been fun this year. You know, I like scoring. You know, I've always been capable of scoring, and uh, something I'm finally getting a chance to do. Now, I played with you myself a few years back, and you came in as a freshman as a great leader. Now this is your fifth year senior, and you have so many new guys. What's it like playing with so many new people and being the leader that you are, incorporating that through the, all those new people? Oh, it's great. I love working with the younger guys, you know. Um taking them under my wing, you know, me and Sean Gibson, he's a freshman, he's probably one of my better buddies, you know, I like taking those guys under my wing because I've been here five years, I have the experience, I'm showing those guys the ropes and uh, bringing them along so in a couple years down the road they can be leaders also. Okay, what about Kentucky State? What do you know about Kentucky State? What are some of the things that you have to watch for? Well, um, I don't know too much about them. I just know they have uh, one of the top players in the conference in the uh, chambers. He's uh, leading the conference in scoring and uh, rebounding, and that's about all I know about uh, their team. You know, I haven't seen them play or anything, and this is their first year in the conference. But uh, Coach Piazza and Felsky, they've, you know, scouted them, and uh, I'm sure we'll be well prepared for them when the time comes. Right now, you guys have a you have a wonderful record. You're sitting at 12 and three, but you are two and three in the conference. Why don't you reflect a little bit? You're about halfway through the season. Reflect on your record now, and where you'd like to be, and where you'd like to be at the end of the season. Well, um, we've dropped a couple of uh, close games, you know, against Kentucky Wesleyan and uh, up at Bellarmine College. Uh, those games could have went either way. You know, we missed a, a couple of free throws down the stretch and a couple of plays we could easily be 14-1, and one, you know. Uh, it hurt a lot, you know. We had to rebound from that. But like I said, 12-3 and three is not a bad record, and um, I'm pretty sure at the when the end of the season comes, we'll be up around the first or second place in the conference and we'll probably be in the NCAA tournament. You know, I got my goals set way up there, and uh, I'm sure we're capable of attaining those goals. Well, Lawrence, you had a very great year and continued success in the second half of the season and also the second half of this basketball game. Okay, thanks, Charlie. Great. Charles Washington talking with Lloyd Surgeon, senior co-captain of the IPFW Mastodons. And Lloyd, we're 12-3 and three right now. Why don't you reflect a little bit about um, our record? I know we've lost a couple of close ones that could have went either way. Why don't you reflect a little? 12-3, and three, you know, most people from the Fort Wayne area, you know, that's, you know, a real good record. But as we look back on the team, we should be, you know, we lost. We, we give up the ass and loss. We take that, you know, we shot poorly. You know, you get one of them a year. But like the Westland game and the Bellarmine College game, we kind of just, just gave, not really gave it away, but just the close there and, you know, we should have won that. So we're kind of not disappointed, but, you know, we know we could be better than what we are right now. 14-1 and one if we had a couple breaks. 
Okay, you're one of the senior co-captains on the team, Lloyd, and with so many new people, I asked Jordan the um, same question. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how it is to have so many new people after losing a lot of veterans the last couple of years? It's, you know, preseason, you know, you play with them, try getting used to what they're doing. You know, everybody comes from a different high school situation where they do, you know, some people are sp supposed to score in high school, like Sean Gibson, and, you know, he was a, a role player with Pat Graham, you know, it's now at IU, and now he's starting to score, and it's just getting into, you know, what everybody can do, you know, and trying to mold the team into, you know, a, a real working machine, and that's, that's probably the hardest part, you know, we got, we had, you know, a lot of new faces, seven new faces, I think it is, and it's just playing, getting used to each other, and now we're starting to mold, you know, into a real team now. Let's talk about maybe a subject that you might not want to talk about right now. Let's talk about free throws. A couple of weeks ago, maybe even less than that, you were at a 90% clip, and you dropped a little bit. Is are you? What kind of problems are you having? It's, I guess, it's lack of concentration. I've been, you know, I've, Sunday I went to the gym and shot about 500 after the Bellarmine College loss. We got back at five in the morning. I went right to the gym as soon as it opened at noon, and I, I made them all. And I don't. It's just concentration. I talked to my mom and dad about this. My brother, my brother was a good ball player, and they just said, you know, it's like bowling. You know, you get that little rut, and then you try to overcompensate, overcorrect it, and you just got to let it go and get back into the rhythm, and hopefully the things will come around. Your next game is against, well, actually tonight, since this is a tape-delayed halftime show, you're playing Kentucky State. What do you plan to do against Kentucky State? Um, as of right now, I know absolutely nothing about them except that one player they have that's leading the conference in rebounding and uh, scoring. We'll find out in practice today, and uh, then we'll be all set for Thursday night's game. Uh, we really, we're clueless on their team right now. Coaches know what's going on, and they'll they'll give us all the information we need. Well, Lloyd, good luck. Second half of this basketball game and the rest of the season, and continued success. All right, thank you, Charlie. starting the second half. As we ended the first half, 43-43 tie. And Dan, do we have any particular uh, uh, surprises in the statistics? Okay, yeah, a couple half. interesting things here, David. As I mentioned before, uh, the uh, Lewis team is averaging 27% from the three-point three area. Tonight, they're five for six in the first half for 83%. That's a considerable improvement over there, typically shooting from the three-point area. Let's go over uh, some official stats here. Lewis is 16 of 33 for 48% from the field. IPFW is 18 of 27 for 67. So we're actually out shooting them, but they have uh, six more attempts at the basket than we do. Free throws, Lewis is 6 for 10 for 60%. IPFW is 3 for 4 for 75. So they've had six more uh, free throws, six more two-point attempts and six more uh, free throw attempts. They are uh, out-rebounding IPFW 18 to 12. Uh, turnovers are equal at six. Block shots are equal at one. Uh, IPFW has three more fouls at 10, but nobody at this point in time has uh, more than two fouls. Leading scores for Lewis are Powell with 10 and Harris with nine. For IPFW, uh, Pittman 13 and Gibson 12. So I only had Gibson with 10, so somebody uh, that I gave a basket to, uh, Gibson was credited with that basket. Well, maybe IPFW can hope that that three-point shooting uh, for Lewis comes back and uh, approaches more of their normal average. Uh, that five for six is tough to do. Oh, very tough to do. We, we might take this opportunity to uh, inform you that our next live telecast will be a doubleheader on Saturday, February 1 at 6 p.m. The Lady Pumas from St. Joseph College in Rensselaer, Indiana will be here to meet the IPFW Lady Dons. And then at 8 o'clock that same night, the Pumas from St. Joseph's College will take on the IPFW Mastodons men's basketball team. Catch all the action of college basketball right here on College Access Channel 6. Well, Dave, while we're making a pitch for the athletic department, I'd like to remind the folks that next week we have a big volleyball tournament here with uh, 
the IPFW Invitational presented by Fort Wayne National Bank and Pepsi. And uh, USC will be here along with Penn State, Ohio State, and ourselves. We will not be telecasting, so it's a good opportunity for those who have fans who haven't been out here to see our gymnasium and see some top-notch volleyball. IPFW is at the Penn State tournament this week. We don't have the results of today, but last night they beat Rutgers uh, in five games. They beat Navy in three games, and they lost to Penn State, who they will open with next uh, Friday night in the IPFW Invitational. So very, very exciting action, volleyball action coming up here at the IPFW Athletic Center next Friday night. Okay, we are approaching the tip-off here. The official is explaining some aspects here with both teams. We're now ready to go. IPFW will inbounds the ball on the alternate possession. <coughs> there you see the halftime stats that we just read to you. Mike Pittman, Lawrence Jordan back on the attack for IPFW. In fact, the starting lineup is in the game. Sam Long for a three-pointer, no good. Lewis rebounds, Andre Brown off to Lance Harris. Lance runs the show for the Lewis Flyers. Again, once they have to set up in that half-court offense, they're very patient, look around the perimeter, move inside, look for the inside shot. Andre Brown moving down the middle, takes the shot up and in. So we have again a lead change take place. There were 13 lead changes in the first half. IPFW setting up on the offense. Not much movement right now. Scott Breaker breaks loose underneath and returns the favor so that we have a tiger score, 44. But an awful 45. lot of standing around. I heard Kurtz Piazza yell, move, move, and that's when uh, Burkhart broke into the open. But other, up till that point, he was just standing there. The beginning of the second half, Dave, is almost a different ballgame than we saw in the first half. The action was so quick up and down the court. Everything's very deliberate right now. No one's had the opportunity to break out. And on that move, we will have a foul called against IPFW. Scott Burkhart. Andre Brown will go to the line to shoot two. Forty-five, forty-five tie. Andre Brown. First free throw is good. Gives Lewis the lead again at 1, 46, 45. Andre looks at the second one, puts it up and in. And that puts him in double figures with 10 tonight. Quickly down the floor on a half court pass. And we get a, a nice bounce on the ball. Scott Burkhart, two attempts at it and couldn't get the ball to fall. Lance Harris sets up the Flyers, and they look outside, look inside. Scott Burkhart breaks through, cannot control the ball, but awfully good hustle. Looking inside, nothing to go. Back down the right side for the Flyers, and Lance Harris launches a three-pointer, and Sam Long comes in to rebound the ball. Well, actually, Lewis had a mismatch there that didn't take advantage of with uh, Mike Pittman guarding number 41. And they didn't recognize they it. Didn't did they didn't recognize it. At the end of that play, Lawrence Jordan drew the, uh, or was called for the offensive foul. That's Lawrence's third foul. Typically, he does not have foul trouble. But uh, the offensive fouls have, have caused him a bit of a difficulty here tonight. Well, I think a little bit of frustration on his part. Again, going back to that very first foul, he got called on him. And uh, the other two have been uh, not, not your typical fouls. And uh, right. I, I think he's lost his cool just a little bit here. And he needs to gain control because we certainly can't afford to, uh, to miss him. 
I saw that uh, Lewis called the timeout there, and I'm not sure what that strategy is because we're still early here in the second half. They've been seeming to do things right. And uh, here you see the replay of the charge where he turns around in number 31. It's hard Lance to tell how much, how much contact that's was right. made. Well, that's a sign of a good ball player, though, Dave, yeah, if you can uh, right. do a little theatrics there, too. As we see the huddle, Andy Piazza and the IPFW Mastodons, again, mapping out where they want to go now for this last 17 minutes and 35 seconds. Because they know full well they must play the full 17-35 and play it well. Lewis will inbound the ball. Andre Brown, Corey Powell, Troy Prendergast in the ball game, Lance Harris, and Jay Retzinger, the starting lineup, in for the Lewis Flyers. As it is for the IPFW Mastodons, with the exception of John Heinstrider playing in place of Scott Burkhart. Andre Brown with a nice soft jump shot. <coughs> Mike Pittman down the floor quickly. Ball knocked away by Andre Brown. Almost, uh, almost too much of a force, Dave. You know, they're yep. still trying, and, and that really became clear the other night against Kentucky State at the end of the ballgame. Uh, it's not that we, we had given up. We just were uh, really forcing the ball inside. Corey Powell tips that inbounds pass out and uh, good hustle down the sideline, but it will remain Indiana-Purdue basketball. And a time in the ballgame when the Mastodons need to come down and get some good offensive play. I know that Coach Piazza was really frustrated the other night. That's a, a, he was quoted in the paper as saying, when you get a lead 81-67, to 67, you need to run your offense, not play as individuals, and that's what he was frustrated by. And Lawrence Jordan that time with a layup. Uh, Sean Gibson with the tip. But the tip came off of the support above the basket, then came back down in, so no basket. It's awfully important at this stage of the game, too, that uh, the Mastodons have high-intensity defense, as we just see there. Sean Gibson skipped into the passing lane, picked it off, and Mike Pittman with an opportunity to put it in, and he missed. Well, we talked a minute ago about IPFW uh, adjusting their lineup from big to little, and now they have that little lineup in there. And there we saw an excellent move by Lance Harris to the basket. Strong kid for no bigger than he is, and right. he had excellent body control. He's got a chance for three points. They're up by six. They can move out to a seven-point lead here. And IPFW cannot afford to fall too far behind here. No. This may be, I think, the biggest lead of the night for Lewis up to this point. Just under 16 and a half minutes to play. Free throw up and in. So a three-point play, seven-point lead for the Flyers of Lewis University. Indiana Purdue with the ball. Offensive set. Desperately needing something good to happen on the offense. And then we see a foul called on John Adams, number 44. Kevin Shank, Dan, seems to be very hesitant to look for the shot, although that time he did make a bit of a move and then decided to pass off. Well, and early in the season he wasn't that hesitant. I don't know if he's just had uh, some bad luck with shooting lately and he's just a hesitant to shoot the ball or... Uh... Defensive pressure all over. IPFW making, in my opinion, a lot of mistakes and putting the ball on the floor with, for one dribble and picking it up. And Lewis is very good at Closing the, the, the passing lanes down. And there we see Lewis making an errant move, throwing the pass out of bounds. Indiana Purdue now with an opportunity to squeeze that lead back down. They trail by five. After trailing by seven at one point. Lewis making a couple changes here, hoping to uh, get themselves back into a continuous offensive pattern. Kevin Gallinger, a 6'6 senior into the Lewis lineup. He looks a little taller than 6'6, doesn't he? Yes. In fact, he looks about the same size as Gibson, and Gibson goes 6'8. <laughs> Indiana Purdue on the move. 
looking for the offensive set. Sean Gibson over to Leonard Fox. Leonard to the baseline, moves in to ball to John Hunt, straighter, but Sean Gibson picks up the loose ball and puts it in. Two alert baskets in a row now right. for Sean Gibson. Big baskets for the Mastodon. Lewis with the ball. Real mismatch inside with Lawrence Jordan on number 33, Kevin Gallagher. They get the ball inside. That's and what they wanted to ball. do, but they wanted better execution. Lawrence intimidated him. Kevin, you got to take that one. And it's good, a three-pointer. And if it was a lack of confidence, that might just give and him his confidence back. That won't hurt a thing. And here comes Lance Harris, though, on the move. And Lance has been doing that all night long. Every time they needed to answer, they did. So they break the tie one more time. Lewis in the lead, 54-52. IPFW ball underneath their own basket. And we'll see what kind of an offensive set we get this time from the blue and white. Hanstreiter having trouble picking up that ball there. And luckily, Lewis picked it up, but we're standing out of bounds at the time. IPFW moving the ball on the perimeter. Inside now to Sean Gibson. Back out to Lawrence. Three-pointer by Lawrence. Short, but Lawrence follows his own shot from a third of the length of the court. Now Kevin gets a second try. No good. And we had a little extra effort, but a long, long pass. No good. And Lewis gives up the ball. Indiana Purdue now will come back with an opportunity to tie. IPFW has got to not get into the mentality of taking that three-point shot every time they've got. They still have to work the ball around the perimeter, but try to get it inside with an opening at times. Lawrence Jordan with the ball, looks down the left side. Comes back out to the top. Inside to John Heinstrider. And he goes up strong in the basket. Doesn't score, but does draw the foul. Played a little over six minutes in the second half, Dan, and still have a very close, close ball, game. ball game. Exactly what we expected, Dave. Both teams play an awful lot alike. To be honest with you, though, I must give Lewis the credit. They appear to play with just a little bit more poise than IPFW does. And as you've been reading off some of the players here, it appears they've got a little bit more experience in the lineup. On Strider's first free throw is good. Pulls IPFW within one. Yeah, it seems like underneath the basket, too, uh, Lewis may have just a little more of the leaping ability. They get up just a little bit higher. Onstrider misses the second free throw, so it's a one-point ball game. Up for IPF or for Lewis, and we see a quick break down the middle, a little back door move, and Kevin Gallinger picks up two for the Lewis Flyers. Good ball movement at the moment by IPFW, but a couple chancy passes, Dave. Those yep. cross court passes, you if you don't just hit them just right, they can either be intercepted or go out of bounds. But they're certainly not getting anything wide open. Kevin was fairly close there, and now we get a nice move inside. He's got to go up. He scores. Draws the foul. So a possible three-point play. Nice feed from Sean Gibson. John Heinstrider right underneath. Went up strong. Scored the layup. And now we'll have an opportunity for the free throw. Scott Burkhart returns to the lineup for the Mastodons, replacing Sean Gibson. Well, Gallagher picked up that foul and they're bringing Oroko in right, right away for him. Oroko played sparingly in the first half, but it's very strong and uh, physical underneath the basket. Richard Oroko, six foot nine. He's a sophomore, and he's from Benin City, Maguerera, and I'm not sure where that is. 
first free throw, three point free throw by John Einstrider. Ties the game at 56. Corey Powell in the far corner. And we see that time Richard Oroko, as he received the ball, was fouled by Scott Burkhart. Not too many fouls called in the no, second half. Not like the first half. IPFW was in the, or Lewis was in the 1 and 1 early in the uh, first half. And right now, IPFW only has four team fouls, and Lewis has three. Ooh, five seconds. He's going to be over. Unless they call a technical foul for the defensive player touching the ball. Dave, I don't know if we have a replay on that, but that certainly was a poor call. His hands were straight up in the air, and the guy <laughs> threw the, I wish, I don't know if we have the replay on that or not. The only thing could be if he was standing on the out-of-bounds line, which would put him out of bounds, then that's the interpretation of the technical. It sure appeared to me that the gentleman stepped in. Uh, in here we have a free throw by Corey Brown. Uh, Corey Here's Brown. the replay. You see him going it. straight up and down. Watch now. The, we will not see know. him step in. Did you see the red player step into him yes, there? Yes, he did. He was up straight up in the air. Now, what might have happened was the Lewis player might have seen him out of bounds and knew he was there. So, touched him with the ball. In any way, at any rate, it is a uh, weak call, so should we say? Fifty-seven, fifty-six. Lewis leads here. Twelve thirty-one left in the second half. A must-win game for both teams if they hope to stay in the uh, NCAA bid race. And for a good standing in the GLBC. Some uh, trap defense at the moment. Doing some, taking some risk. And we have the ball out of bounds off of John Adams underneath. So the IPFW. technical foul didn't didn't really make that much of a difference. They ended up scoring one point off of it, and IPFW played very strong defense. And I believe we turned the intensity up a couple of notches that time on the defense. And oftentimes a technical foul like that will get you fired up. Big Z with the ball. Trying to get something going here in the offensive set for IPFW. Scott Burkhardt inside. Strong move, good basket. And we have a lead change. IPFW has now taken a one point lead, 58 57. Kevin Shank will be called for the foul. Dave, again, I think that's probably a legitimate call, but you talk about being out of position. The other official facing the play did not call it, it was the backside official. He may have thought he heard the, the slap. It's got to be. It's got to be a tough job officiating game as quick as these players go. Well, when they came in with the third official, Dan, I had a suggestion that I thought uh, they ought to take that third official, position him in the sixth row, about hit half court, and let him watch the game from there and make his calls. Lewis went back into the lead with that last basket underneath by John Adams. Short shot, John Hunstrider rebounds, puts it up and in. So back and forth we go. Andre Brown with the ball over to Lance Harris. <coughs> Lawrence, Brown, uh, Lawrence Jordan. And we have an over and back now. Lawrence kicked it loose. Lewis touched it in their own court. Had to go across the. the and if he wouldn't line. have touched it, it would not have been the back and over because right. Lawrence would have been the last one to touch it. But he actually got his hand on the ball. So IPFW's made a nice run here. They were down by seven at one point uh, not too long ago, and for the last five minutes have, has play, have played uh, very consistently and done the things they need to do. They've taken a one-point lead here. There's 10 minutes 56 seconds left. I think uh, Coach Piazza 
needs to again remind his kids that this is where we were last time only not in those uh, not in those exact words you don't want to bring up that last game but you want to that's right ensure that they do the things that they've been trained to do in, in, in all the hours they've spent practicing we see the GLVC standings uh, on the screen for the men's uh, Great Lakes Valley Conference Kentucky Wesleyan on top at four and one Southern Indiana right behind at three and one that one loss by the way right here to the Mastodon so if uh, Indiana Purdue can just get things going here tonight, come out with a victory and keep that going, they'll be all right. You see that both Lewis and IPFW are currently two and four, so it should be a pretty even ball game. Well, Dave, it's my opinion that if uh, IPFW can finish in the top three of the conference at the end of the year, <laughs> that they have a very good opportunity of getting an NCAA bid. But with four losses at this point in time and having to go on the road against Lewis, having to go on the road against St. Joe, having to go on the road against Kentucky Wesleyan and Southern Indiana in the same weekend are going to be very, very tough. They're just going to have to have that in intestinal fortitude to uh, come away with some victories there and they certainly cannot lose any more at home well they've uh, they have just two teams left in the conference that they will not have played after tonight uh, all of these first uh, seven that they will have played they have played evenly and have played well so they know they can beat them but they, they just have to go out and get the job done Mike Pittman from the left side, no good. Sean Gibson, big rebound. Sam Long with the jumper outside, no good. Two shots there that I felt were hurried. They just didn't quite take the time to set up, and if uh, they felt like they were going to get blocked, they shouldn't have taken them. Lance Harris on the left side for Lewis. Back out to the top, Corey Powell. Andre Brown trying to make a move inside. Sean Gibson holding him out. The Lewis Flyers moving that ball around, patiently looking for a move, but under 10 seconds on the shot clock and they lose the ball. Good hustle by Scott Burkhart that time, but he was a little off balance, traveled with the ball. I think Lawrence thought he got slapped on his first shot with no call, and uh, you mentioned Burkhart came in but couldn't get under control. Lawrence may have taken the ball in just a stride or two uh, farther than he needed to, and he could have stopped and taken the jump shot. Corey Powell on the loose, short jumper, no good, follow up is good so Lewis goes back into the lead and for the 20th time tonight we have a lead change Dan Mike Pittman for three no good tip up no good by Sam Long two Lewis Flyers battle for it and come out with uh, Andre Brown with the ball Pittman looked like he again shot put that ball didn't get a real nice touch on the ball Yeah, he had uh, plenty of space. He was open. Didn't look real comfortable. Lewis again, patiently looking with the ball on the outside. Looking inside, nothing there. Scott Burkhart and Sean Gibson holding the defense or the offensive players strongly out of play. And then we had a foul against Jay Retzinger. I think Sean Gibson will come up with a foul. Well, and I think it's a, a little bit of lackadaisical play there on the white. Uh, IPFW, the ball went up. It was forced a, a poor shot on Lewis's part, but they kind of just watched the ball. Nobody went for it. And uh, number 31, is that number, no, number 41, excuse me, Jay Retzinger uh, <coughs> was able to take it back up, and Gibson had no uh, other option but the foul. Yeah, didn't get the block out on the shot. So we see Jay Retzinger with the free throw. And it's no good. Strong off the back of the rim. Eight minutes and 51 seconds left in this second half. Lewis with a one point lead. Jay Retzinger trying to make it two. Shot is up and good. Mike Pittman quickly down and then outlet pass to Kevin 
Shank, three-pointer, no good. Lance Harris with the ball. Corey Powell tries to go inside Andre Brown. He does, and Andre is stopped, but he is fouled. Right now, IPFW is struggling a little bit defensively. They're getting good overplay on the man guarding the post players, but they's not getting good backside help. And, and what it's coming across late, they're having to foul in order to keep the bucket from being scored. That's exactly what happened there. And almost the same thing's happening to them on the offensive end. Uh, they almost get an opening, almost get the good shot they want inside, and instead have to settle for something uh, a little long range. They need something to drop soon. Andre Brown at the line. First free throw is no good. That's uh, Lewis, Lewis has had two uh, players up there, uh, Retzinger and now Brown, who've been a little bit short, so maybe they're getting a little bit tired, Dave. Let's hope. Andre's second shot is good. So three-point lead, eight and a half minutes to go. Indiana Purdue with the ball and needs to sharpen up their offensive attack. And I see Coach Andy Piazza giving them the uh, signal for one of their offensive sets. Back across court to Mike Pittman, inside to Lloyd Surgeon. Mike penetrated the lane, uh, knew he had to go up with it, so he kind of used his body to protect the shot and did draw the foul. <laughs> Could be a big play if Mike can just get him off of that 60. Pittman will be shooting, he's a very good free throw shooter. Has, had not, has not had a number of opportunities this year. And Mike was ill for a while, but his first free throw is up and good. So it makes it 63-61. IPFW trails by two. And that's his 14th point, Dave, but only his first of the second half. Second half. Second one is also good. Pressure defense exerted by IPFW. Andre Brown, not real sure. He uh, had some trouble getting it in. He's going to try to bring it up himself. And in that scuffle underneath the basket would appear there will be a Lewis foul. Official call the one and one, but uh, that's only the 15 foul. 15 Lewis foul, that's right. <laughs> John Adams back into the lineup for the Lewis Flyers. He's replacing Andre Brown. There you see the play. You see the push from behind by Andre Brown. Surgeon had good position. That's right, and he drew that foul because he had the position. Indiana and Purdue with an opportunity to go back into the lead again. Scramble for the ball. Lawrence Jordan has the ball, and we have a shot clock reset to correction on by the officials. Scared me. I'm not sure what he was going to call there. I thought he was going to call three seconds in the lane. Mike Pittman, again, going very short with that three-pointer, right. particularly from the corner. Well, he's bringing it from way down low. He's not getting yeah. the ball up high and uh, getting good arch on the ball. That would have been a key basket if he could have hit that one. And Lewis not getting quite as much uh, movement and action in their offense at the moment either. Oh, as tough as they play defense, Dave, you got to believe they got to be wearing down a little bit. That's right. Pendergrass with the ball. Down to under 10 seconds on the shot clock. And they do realize it. The shot goes up. John Adams rebounds, puts it up and in. Poor play by IPFW. They worked the ball down and got it down to seven seconds on the shot clock. Made him take a poor shot and then didn't box out for the rebound. Right. Nice shot inside by Lloyd Surgeon. 
So Indiana Purdue stays close with N1. And Corey Powell back into the flyer lineup, as is Lance Harris. And I think if Lewis has any hope of winning this ballgame, they got to have Harrison there to run the show. And Corey, Brown, or Corey uh, Powell has also done a nice job for them out on the wings. Oh, nice steal by Kevin Shank. Up and in. And Indiana Purdue regains the lead at 66 65. Trap on the defense. Short jumper, air ball. But no IPFW player going for the ball. Lewis Hard. just much, much more aggressive trying to get that ball back. And maybe not even aware that that shot had gone up. Because Jay Retzinger had uh, put it up from the lane pretty quickly. Nice step into the passing lane by Sean Gibson that time. Lawrence Jordan forcing the ball a little bit inside. I thought he should have pulled it back out and uh, set up the offense. Lloyd Surgeon had a man in front and a man behind, and yeah. luckily it was uh, tapped out of bounds by Lewis. It would have had to have been a perfect pass to get into Lloyd that time, and even if he had it, he might not have had any room to operate. Well, Kevin has made his contribution tonight, a three-pointer a while ago, and that steal... Yeah, I think he'll be all right. No control on that one. Lawrence with the ball. And a critical time here now for Indiana Purdue to offensively get the movement, get the set, get the shot, and get the score that they'd like. Leonard Fox strongly to the inside. Now, Dave, this is really following the pattern that happened in tonight. The little guys are trying to bounce, pass the ball to the big guys, and they just cannot handle it that close. It's just <laughs> too tough to get down. Andy yeah. Piazza, I believe, calls a time out there to talk about that problem. If you're going to give it to the big guy, you got to give it up to him where he can handle it. It may be a, a, a situation of uh, not wanting to take the shot, but yet it's better to take the shot than to throw the pass or throw the ball away. Or back it out. There's nothing back wrong. There's out. still plenty of time left on the shot clock. And I think at times we lose, we get that mentality that since we're going at such a fast speed all the time, we cannot run an offense. And I think Lewis is a prime example of that. Lewis certainly tries to run with the ball, but if they don't have it, they set it up and run their offense. I think we get into mentality of the fact that we've got to hurry, 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 and not use very much of that shot clock. And again, we see a shot of the timeout huddle, the Indiana Purdue Mastodons, as they discuss strategy for this last five minutes and 24 seconds. And that's a long time in a ball game like this. A lot this. of time. I believe when play resumes, it will be Lewis ball out of bounds underneath the uh, Indiana Purdue basket. Right. As you see the cheerleaders and the crowd here tonight, which is uh, a pretty decent crowd on a Saturday night. I sure would like to see the IPFW Mastodons come away with a win, I'm sure. Well, the defensive intensity is going to have to be here now for five and a half minutes. The uh, Offensive awareness maybe he needs to pick up. Good defense, Andre Brown. Probably used about all of his five seconds, and here's Lance Harris with the ball. He turns down the jump shot to come back now and set up. Not a bad decision. Oop, there's a three-pointer on its way. No good. And out of bounds by Lewis. So IPFW will get the ball. And with the lead, an opportunity to increase that lead. Well, Dave, as I mentioned earlier, it's hard for me to imagine a ball club like Lewis getting beat by uh, 41 points, uh, 42 points the other night up at Ashland. I know Ashland's a good ball club, but this, this Lewis group's a scrappy group. Well, Ashland must have had a terrific shooting night and just didn't give them any opportunity at all to uh, stay in the game. Too much uh, ball handling there. They need to pass the ball. Yep. Yeah. A little hesitation. And up and in. <laughs> Sloppy play on IPFW's part, and they cannot afford to do this and stay in the conference race. Yeah. 
Someone's going to have to step forth that wants the game, wants the ball, and will take the uh, make the move and take the shot. Nice move by Sam Long. Ball off the rim. Good defense by Sean Gibson. Lance Harris again sets up for the Lewis Flyers. Just a little under four minutes to play. Lewis with a one-point lead. It's important that the Mastodons keep that defensive intensity there. Corey Brown wanting three, and he has it. But they only counted, well, counted two. two. He must have been on the line. Well, a break for IPFW. But only if they take advantage of it, Dave. That's uh, Absolutely. Again, they've not been taking advantage of the last few minutes here. Lloyd Surgeon inside, and with a good move. Too bad he couldn't have gotten the basket. But it's a good move. Lloyd wanted the shot and was willing to take it. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Need to uh, hit one or two of those outside shots so to open that defense up. Their defense is packed back in again, and we uh, that's the first opportunity we've had to take the ball to the bucket in the last uh, couple minutes. Here you see the play. John Adams picks up the foul. Lloyd Surgeon will be going to the line to shoot two. Lloyd was uh, one of the leaders in the NCAA Division II early in the season, free throw shooter, but it ran into a poor streak of about three games in a row on that Kentucky trip and coming back here. First free throw, no good by Lloyd Surgeon. Lloyd will step to the line for free throw number two. IPFW needs this point so they can get back down to uh, trailing by just two. Second free throw, bounces around, no good. A lot of time left, three minutes, 15 seconds. And Indiana Purdue must keep this defensive pressure up, not give up an easy basket here, get the ball back, go down and, and get a good offensive move and score. IPFW with a small lineup again with Jordan, Pittman, and Shank in the lineup at the same time. There's that move I didn't want to see, but uh, they got the ball inside. Want a backdoor cut. Lloyd Surgeon. Fouls number 42, Andre Brown. Well, and Lewis is doing a great job running time down the clock and uh, getting a lot of movement underneath the basket. In fact, what they've done, Dave, is they've moved uh, three three-point people out on top of the three-point area, which opens up the baseline for those two big men to uh, just uh, back and forth until somebody gets open, and they've been able to capitalize on that. They haven't scored buckets, but they've got an awful lot of fouls in there. IPFW is not doing a very good job of helping on the backside. The, uh, the defender is doing a good job of fronting the, the uh, cutter, but uh, not getting very good backside help. There you saw the, uh, the foul. Jo uh, Lloyd Surgeon forced to uh, foul to keep the uh, John Adams from or uh, excuse me, Andre Brown from scoring. Well, Dan, I'd like to take this opportunity along with you, I'm sure, to uh, thank the crew, the College Access Channel 6 and the Learning Resource Center at IPFW for their participation in the live production of our game tonight. They've done a great job with those replays. Every time we've asked for one, they've been able to provide it. So, Well, two minutes and 50 seconds left to go here. Will probably be a lot of action in this last 250. It's plenty of time for the Mastodons to come back, uh, get that ball moving offensively. They just need a break here somewhere along the line to uh, kind of pump them up, it looks like, a little bit. Well, they're going to need to, they're gonna need to force that break, though, I think, and uh, it's not just going to come because uh, they're out there on the floor. Scott Burkhart's re-entered the lineup. Andre Brown's going to go to the line for uh, two shots here. <coughs> Could put Lewis up by five. As you said, still Which plenty is, of time. That's right. It's not an impossible situation. Just one that uh, you'd rather not have. Andre could help a little bit here if he wouldn't hit both of these. Andre Brown, 13 points on the evening. First shot is up and good. Attempting to give the Lewis Flyers a five-point lead, and he hits it, and that is a five-point lead. 
But again, plenty of time for the Mastodons. They must come down this time and get the offensive set, get the offensive move they want. And there is an excellent pass inside. Scott Burkhart with the basket. Mike Pittman with the good move. Well, and that may be the spark if they can play defense here, but they need to play defense here. And a hustling play by Mike Pittman, but he draws the foul, and it will send to the line number 24, Ernest Hickman. And I'm not sure if uh, Hickman has shot any free throws tonight or not. I don't think so. Nope, he has not, Dave. <laughs> it was a good good play by Mike Pittman. Uh, he was not a, an obvious foul. Probably was a foul, but uh, he had an opportunity for a steal also. Two minutes and 26 seconds. Left. IPFW has got to box out here on every single foul shot in case of a miss. They can't First give Lewis opportunity. Good. Yeah, a rebound by Lewis on a missed free throw would be uh, very, very detrimental to the IPFW cause at this point. Second free throw is also good. Back to the five point lead and two and a half minutes to play. Both teams will be in the one and one, so every foul. There's Mike Pittman on the three-pointer, and this time Danny put it up uh, with a little more follow-through. Got the bucket, and it's a two-pointer. And there we have a breakaway. Kevin Shank came up with the ball. Lawrence Jordan puts it in, and we have a tie game. Two minute or one minute, 52 seconds to play a tie game. They played all night to come down to this. It's tied. It's going to be tough all the way. Kevin Shank with a block but draws the foul and will send number 23, Corey Powell, to the free throw line. Not sure that was a good choice on the foul. It was a forced shot by number 23, Corey yeah. Powell. And Maybe. now you're going to give him two free throws here with uh, no pressure at all. And Lewis has hit several in a row here down the stretch. They shoot only 68.7% for the year, but they've uh, appears to have done much better than that here in the second half. They've exceeded their season stats in a lot of ways tonight. Their three-point shooting, their free throw shooting. So Lewis back into the lead. Well, we talked about that before the broadcast, that uh, every time we play these guys, it's a war. Yes, it is. A minute 40 to play. IPFW trails by two with the ball. <coughs> this game has an awful lot of similarities to the one the other night. Uh, yes. Very close at the end, trailing here. And in that last uh, turnover, I'm not sure it was a need to have to try to get that pass down. Maybe right. a little over anxious to pass. That was a good foul, though, by Kevin Shanks. Couldn't yes. afford to give up the layup. To Corey Powell will force him to do that because he had a wide open layup if Kevin hadn't picked up the foul. And again, with a minute 29 to go, Corey hits the first free throw. And regardless of what he does with this next one, still time for the Mastodons to come away with a victory, but they must be very, very sharp mentally alert in all their play defensively and offensively. Lewis has hit their free throws down the stretch, which is so important in a game yeah. like this. It's about eight or nine in a row. Right. Four-point lead, similar to Thursday night, this stage of the game. Lackadaisical again. The person's not ready for the pass. Mike Pittman with the three-point opportunity. Misses. Rebound. Corey Powell. I'm sorry, Ernest Hickman. Minute to go. Still enough time if the right things could happen. And you don't want a loose layup like that. Well, 79 73 with 48 seconds to go. And Indiana Purdue needing two or three good things in a row to happen for well, them here. Another tough, another tough game, and we knew it was going to be that way, and IPFW is just not executed down here at the end, and they played a very good first half. I think Coach Piazza's got to be pleased with the way they played the first half, but here in the second half, again, they've lost, lost that execution that, that you need to have in games like this. Our 
our next live telecast will be a double header Saturday, February 1 at 6 p.m. The Lady Pumas from St. Joseph College will be here to meet the IPFW Lady Dons. Then at 8 o'clock, the Pumas men's basketball team will take on the IPFW Mastodons. Catch all the action of college basketball right here on College Access Channel 6. Well, I think IPFW, Dave, got to go to the three-point shot here. He's got to work to get the three-pointer, call a quick timeout, try to get the ball back. If they don't get it back within a couple seconds, they've got to uh, foul. I'm not sure who you'd pick of looking down the stat sheet here. Lewis is not that good a free throw shooting team, but they've certainly uh, done that tonight. Well, maybe one of the factors here again late in this ball game is that uh, the IPFW is a little inexperienced, and there aren't that many guys that are stepping forward to say, give me the ball, let me give it a try. Well, you've heard Andy talk so many times before. I know he was real frustrated last year with three seniors on the team, and at times where he felt like they needed to step forward, they didn't. And uh, so far this year, uh, Lawrence Jordan and uh, Lloyd have done a pretty good job, and Lloyd just hasn't been able to uh, come through tonight. And there you see probably something that epitomizes the night. The ball, the scramble, four or five people with an opportunity to, to get the ball. It just wouldn't uh, stay. It was bouncing around like a uh, pinball. Sean Gibson takes the three-point shot. We're down to 13 seconds. And Lewis University is going to come away with a road victory, one that they've uh, worked very hard to, to achieve here tonight. And with six seconds to go, the foul is called against Scott Burkhart. Andre Brown will go to the free throw line. Andre, I think, may have been bumped in the eye. Well, Lewis is going to go to 11 and 5 on the year, Dave, and 3 and 4 in the conference, while IPFW will drop to 12 and 5 and 2 and 5 in the conference. And that's just a. Uh, Again, I, we mentioned this coming on the air. That it's just going to be very, very difficult to uh, to have much uh, NCAA bid hopes. Well, I think probably at this point in time, uh, regardless of GLVC standings, uh, NCAA bid, uh, it's at that point of the season where the Mastodons need to regroup just a little bit and decide, let's get ready for the next ball game and forget the standings, forget the records, and play each ball game in its own right. That's exactly what they have to do. You can you have to take one ball game at a time. Free throw is good by John Adams as he stretches that lead a little bit like the first game Dan the margin at the end is not going to be indicative of the tightness That's of the ball correct. game. Uh, Lewis is going to come away with a victory. It was a tough one. Lawrence Jordan with a NBA three that won't quite go. And we have the end of the ball game. Lewis University, 82, IPFW, 73. Dave, let me uh, try to give you some unofficial scoring stats here for the victorious Lewis Flyers, finishing with 82 points and again going 11 and 5 and 3 and 4 in the conference, so overall record. They were led in scoring by Corey Powell with 20 points. Uh, Andre Brown had 15, John Adams had 10. Ernest Tickman had 11, Lance Harris had 14, Troy Pendergrass had 6, and I believe that was the scoring for the Lewis Flyers. For the IPFW Mastodons, and they go to 12-5 and five on the year, 2-5 and five in the conference. Again, uh, just points out how tough, tough the conference is, being undefeated in non-conference games and losing 5 in your first 7 in the conference just shows how tough this conference is. They were led in scoring tonight by... Mike Pittman with 18 points. Sean Gibson had 14. Scott Burkhardt had 12. John Honstreiter had 6. Lloyd Surgeon had 5. Sam Long had 7. Kevin Shank had 5. And Lawrence Jordan had 4 for a total of 73. Well, Dan, you mentioned they played 7 games. But they have 11 conference games left. And they can accomplish a lot of things in those last 11 games and must go to work to do that. Well, 
I think it's, I think you're right, Dave. I think the point you made earlier about taking one game at a time and they, and they can't look at that NCAA bid or the GLVC standings. They have to look at them inwardly and say, okay, what do we need to do now to uh, to get back on track? Because they're obviously not playing the caliber of ball they were playing uh, five games ago. Well, we would encourage you to uh, come back, join us at our next home game, uh, February 1st when IPFW, both men's and women's, will be playing the St. Joe College Pumas. We'll be joining the National College Television's Healthy State in progress immediately following tonight's uh, telecast. Stay tuned to Channel 6 for more NCTV programs. At approximately 10.30, you'll see Talk is Cheap. At 11, Live at 8. And at 11.30, Good News, Bad News. Well, for Dan Gebhardt, this is Dave Skelton thanking you for joining us for tonight's telecast. We won one and we lost one. We'll try to do better next time. So thanks again and good night.